everyone. I'm Rachel Zoe. And I'm Roger Berman. And you're listening to Works, works for, for Us. Us where we talk to people about what works for them and their relationships, and of course, what doesn't. On this episode of Works For Us, we wanted to give a little more background and color into our relationship by talking about our actual parents. Whether you like it or not, your parents play a huge role in pretty much every other relationship in your life, for the rest of your life. And now that Roger and I are parents, I have such a new or very, very deepened respect for my own parents, just by having a better understanding that it's the actual scariest and most wonderful job you could ever have. I mean, my parents have influenced me in so many ways. I don't know, I've always felt like I've tried to take the things I've loved the most about my parents. I respect the most about my parents and try and run with those things like being good people and always being kind to people and, you know, being grateful and gracious and all of those things. And then the things that <laughs> irritated me about both of my parents, I try, if I catch myself doing those, then I try to um, not do those. Yeah. I think one of the great <laughs> challenges is life is to try not to be your parents. I mean, or try it, to be your parents. Well, yeah, but like you said, it's the good with the good and the bad with the bad. I, I always laugh at that uh, the commercial that's on TV now, where they're just like they they go to school to not be their parents. I don't know if you've been seeing that. No. It's hilarious. It's like an, I think it's a Geico commercial. It's hilarious. <laughs> but they're at school, and he's like he's like top of the morning to you. He's like, no, nobody uses those words. <laughs> you know, it's so <laughs> funny, and they yell at them. You know, and like they're wearing like a vet, like, uh, you know, a vest or something. It's like, no. Well, I kind of feel like, you know, for me, it's like the little things. It's sort of like, you know, my mom sleeps till noon. I'm yeah, up at does. six. You know, my mom never throws anything out in the refrigerator ever. We used to have science projects in the refrigerator along with condiments, but actually nothing to eat. And for me, I just throw everything out after 24 hours in fear of getting food poisoning. Um, so it's like things like that you tend to go with or do the opposite. You're a lot more phobic than your mother. Yes, for sure. Where do you get your phobia from? Because your dad's not phobic either. No, he's not. I'm the only one. I'm a Virgo in a sea of cancers. I am the only phobic person in my family. Yeah, it's kind of strange. I know. Think about I'm alone it. on an island. I always have been. But it works, for, it, it works for my family. It just does. They think I'm nuts. I think they're nuts. But it works. Clearly. You know, they're slobs. I'm, they really are. I'm compulsive, and they're a little you know, sloppy. <laughs> the way it just happens. I mean, love them to, to death, but I know, I know, but it works. Okay, so in this episode of <laughs> we're calling Meet the Parents, this episode of Meet the Parents of works for us. I want to actually honor Roger's parents, who are very sadly no longer with us, Marilyn and Marvin Berman. So, if it's okay, honey, I want to ask you a few questions about your mom and dad, because I obviously knew them very well, um, but not many people, you know, it was before social media, so not many people have seen your parents or heard about your parents the way they may have seen mine, because I always post them and things like that. Understood. So if it's cool, of course. I'm going to ask you a few questions, I'm honey. an open book, my love. You certainly are. Okay. I wear it on my sleeve, baby. Yeah, you do. For better or for worse. Okay. I'm open for business. Oh, God. When you think back on your childhood, how do you remember your parents? What were they like? Uh, so I guess I'll start with my mom. Mm -hmm. So my mom was more like a grandma than a mother. From the I day I met say. her. She was very like into being like into Judaism and Zionism and... She kind of had that sort of old world uh, viewpoint about things. You know, she was very thrifty, kind of like that depression era mindset, if mm -hmm. you will. Mm -hmm. And uh, she was so like, just very sweet, like the sweetest person ever. That's where I get my sweetness from. Um, Used to have sweetness. And that's where I get my, and she had beautiful blue eyes. And that's where Skylar, Skylar gets mm -hmm. her. I mean, Skylar is the exact same eyes as my mom. Same shape, too. Same shape. So mm -hmm. that's cool. Um, but my mom was super sweet. I would say that she wasn't the most intellectual person is the way I would, I guess, couch that. 
Um, and that I think probably was, you know, an overarching, we'll call it issue in my parents' marriage, um, over time. Cause your dad was frustrated. Yes. My dad was he, frustrated. He couldn't have deep, meaningful business or life yeah. conversations. Yeah. I think that, um, I witnessed I, that. I think that he probably had a little bit, um, more horsepower, so to speak, uh, there and you know and i think that over time you know he's been i think they were together i don't know 40 years 50 years 50 yeah sure you know i think at some point you really need to have uh someone to talk about with your spouse but although they did stay together um till they both passed so that was uh you know a very good uh you know role model for us it's interesting rach and i've been together for 30 years her parents are still together my parents were together i think it's um you know, one of those things that you want to emulate what your uh, parents did. Um, but my dad, so going back to my earlier statement where you try not to be your uh, notice parent, my Notice my silence. Or her smirk. She's smirking, if anybody <laughs> that you can't see. She's smirking. But anyway, long story short, my dad was a little frustrated because my dad, I think, was, um, well, I know he's like really smart. And uh, he knew a lot about a lot of things and he just didn't have a lot of patience for <laughs> mostly anything or anyone. But I do remember distinctly my dad, you know, took me to like every baseball game to like my little league and he was, he was around a lot. But that was a double-edged sword because I think my dad was, again, so uh, he, ha he had a very high, high, bright, high, I think, intellectual capacity, but he also he had this inability to basically my dad was able to quote unquote get by. He was able to quote unquote get by making, you know, real money. Like people would be like, that's great. Great job. But he like worked for the same company for 30 years. He never really rose through management. But the reason why he didn't rise through management is because he didn't really want to, because he really didn't want to deal with that sort of, you know, the, the, you know, politics, frankly. My dad is very, was very much like, I don't know. He didn't really care. Um, so I have some of those uh, tendencies, I guess. And uh, I think that I'm trying to take uh, for my dad. I do have a lot of my, like my dad is the type of person, like if you literally didn't know him and be like, hey, I need a ride 200 miles. He'd be like, okay. Like wouldn't think about it. I would it. say that's the, one of the things you have in common that I like. Yeah, I'm saying like I'm very giving. I'm very happy to help other people. I get that from my dad for sure. And I get my sweet, sweetness from my mom. And I also get my frustrated craziness potentially from my dad that we're working on. Lack of patience. Yeah. <laughs> but ultimately, I would say great you get childhood, your... great growing up, very idyllic. You, had great friends. If you ask his sisters, he has two older sisters. And if you ask his sisters, they would say he was loved the most. He got whatever he wanted. His mother never said no. And that he never wanted to make his bed or clean his room. He just wanted to play with his friends. So he basically left candy under his bed that his sisters could take if they cleaned his room and made his bed. Yeah. So basically at an early age, I was paying off my sisters, <laughs> my older sisters to do work for me. So my old, which led to his entrepreneurial. Yeah, mindset. I guess I was an entrepreneur at early age. Uh, they were six years older and eight years older than me. I asked both your sisters about your upbringing. They said my parents loved him the most. My mother never said no, and we were always wrong. I was like the baby boy. I was basically an only child because you know when I was in you know elementary school, like in sixth grade, I think my sisters were both in college. So I sort of had you know from junior high high school, I was the only person around, and I was a, a guy. And younger, a boy. my a boy, but my parents were sort of over it. You know, you're less protective with a boy, I think. So I didn't really have a lot of rules. You know, I kind of did what I wanted for the most part, but I was mostly good. Jury's still out on how that worked out. It was good. The lack you of know, rules, lack of structure. Well, stay, I, had a lot of I, had lack, I had a lot of lack of structure. Let's put it that way. But I had so much structure. No, I had no structure. <laughs> but, you know, but the thing about that was because... I, I I was never a bad kid, but I was always not a great kid, if you will. But I but the whole point was I was always kind of smart enough to they you know, never, it out. Yeah, never really you know cross the line. Did they ever tell you how they met and fell in love? Oh, 
God. By that should, response, the answer is probably yes. You probably didn't pay attention and now you I, don't remember. I'm not so sure. I know. I know that they I know <laughs> that they were kind of like us, Rach. They were the first in their family. As soon as they got married, they literally got in my dad's car and drove south to just find a new home. But that was like, normal then. That's no, pretty was, normal. No, then. everybody lived with their families nearby. Da, 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 da. That was Oh, you're vi- saying they pieced out. They pieced out. Like we moved to California. My parents pieced out and moved to Florida. Uh, they, you know, they weren't going to maybe move to Atlanta. They stopped there. They didn't really love it. They literally kept driving south and they wound up in Miami Beach. My dad got a job there. My dad was a pharmacist and my mom hated it. It was like so hot and miserable. And then she was pregnant and she was like pregnant, hot and miserable. And Sounds then right. they eventually went back north. So how do you think witnessing their relationship affected you once you actually were grown up? Like what was your view on... Because I have a well, view listen, on I, your parents' relationship listen, that's I, different. I, 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 listen, I, I think I was close to my dad because, you know, as I grew up- Because you're alike? Maybe. Um, I was I was got close to my dad just because I think he was able to talk to me about his interest. You know, he was very into stocks and, you know, investments and just life or just, you know, politics. You never got mad at your mother and no one made you more angry than your father. Yeah, well, my dad has- was I keep saying is my dad was uh, he was yeah he was that's that's the thing my dad could drive me crazy because he's just so annoying um <laughs> that I try not to be that way because I know how he is annoying but anyway uh he was amazing he was a, an amazing dad the thing about my parents which I think and I think you have the same thing and again this is going down to being very blessed and you know literally thanking them but you know, my parents really spoiled me in the fact that, you know, I didn't really work. I mean, I worked in high school. I had a job and you summers worked. I had jobs. No, I had jobs, but like I, I went to college and they You didn't have student for, loans. I didn't have student loans and they didn't make, you know, they wanted me to just, my job was to like be a student. You know, that was, you know, I was very kind of them, I think, uh, looking back. And the thing I remember my parents' relationship, Unfortunately, as I remember, my dad was kind of mean to my mom in just terms of like- That drove you mental. Yeah, like verbally. I I mean, I understand it now. It doesn't doesn't justify it, but I understand it. Um, Like why? Because he was just like- Frustrated. Frustrated. But, you know, I have mixed feelings about that. And and yeah, and uh, anyway, so I had issues with my dad. Remember, I didn't speak to him for a year after my mom died. It was a whole thing. Remember that? Oh, like it was yesterday. God, this is the most boring podcast of all time. People are probably falling asleep. <laughs> Jesus no, Christ. No, I think it's actually important that people know. Look, I think everyone- I'm a lone wolf, Rachel. I don't know I got what no you rudder. are. I got I, no one holding me back. I don't know what you are. You got me holding you back. You got my parents holding you back. You got kids holding Rachel, you back. Can you, you please, got so much holding can you, you back. Please you got repeat? more holding you back yes, than you've this ever is, had. By the way, this is exactly what I've been telling America. <laughs> Rachel's holding me back. Everyone, you said it yourself. I didn't even make it up. Let's just put it in quotes. Hey, honey. Yes, darling. Okay. So here's the thing. Ooh, your voice cracked. It's kind of sexy when that happens. Uh, it's the recent fires. I keep choking on air. Oh. Um, I actually think that, which you may or may not remember, but literally on our like second date and your dad was coming out to DC to meet me. And you said to me, so the thing you need to know about my parents, they're completely opposite. My dad is really smart. Wear your hair off your face. Don't wear a ton of makeup and don't be shy. That's what you said. My dad loves to talk. He wants to hear what you have to say, blah, blah, blah. And you said, my mom is the sweetest person you ever met. She would take anybody in. We used to have all these people living in our yep, house. We used to have, like, I don't think we were necessarily foster kids, but we had like people. Like exchange yeah. students. Yeah, we just like had that. people that like needed help, we'll call it. And I always said, you got your brain from your dad and your heart from your mom. I would agree. Um, but you did say that they were very different and that it did, it did, you did not like the way that your dad treated your mom. I do remember that. I and agree. I remember you getting really mad at him yeah. all the time. I mean, he never, uh, I mean, he no, never, no, I don't never mean... physically, uh, never like laid a hand on her, but just like, just, you know, the way that he, you know, condescending, we talked down to her because. But here's know. the thing. Here's the difference in now. And this is what an observation that I've made. And again, I'm no relationship expert, but what I've realized as is as I listen, as I listen to story after story, 
my mom, my mom's friends, her parents, my grandparents, your grandparents, the like, your parents. I think that now people don't stick the way they used to stick. I think people made a commitment to marriage in the day, my grandparents included, and they stuck no well, yeah, matter my, what. I said my parents had that th- sort of very old world thinking. They were definitely like of that generation. And and probably because I, I they were a lot old. Maybe they had me when they were late-ish. I just think I just think it's different now. I don't know that your parents or many parents, my grandparents, different parents would necessarily have stayed together That's today. That's true. But I do have, par- you know, listen, I have plenty of friends that were divorced even growing up. Yeah. So like, it wasn't like unheard of. No, but I think it wasn't the norm and it wasn't accepted the way it is today. Correct. That's what I think. Which is why I'm so open-minded to it. Ba-da-ba. Un, that was, that's what you call an unfunny statement as we celebrate 30 years. Can you not make unfunny jokes like that? But sweetheart. Because- unfunny. 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 Is that the opposite of funny? Yes. What's one of your favorite memories of spending time with your parents? Together. Or separate. Eating peaches with, with your mom. She always had peaches. Every time I walked in the door, she handed me a bowl of peaches. She, my mom, <laughs> literally, the the memory I had, like one of the most distinct memories I have from my mom is literally anyone coming in the door and she, no, she'd actually offer them an apple. I got peaches. Well, it must have been the summertime. <laughs> or cherries. Are you hungry? Do you want an apple? Literally. That was, she was like very like that. She was like old school. Like you come to my house, I offer you food. You're a little my like last, that, Rachel. Always. You're you very do not leave my like house. You do not leave my house. Maybe that's why I house. like you. You're like my mom. You're very nurturing. Oh, sure. I'm just like her so much. My Cute heart, blonde. I hope. No? By the way, my last memory of your mother was her begging us to give her a grandchild. I do remember that. Oh, yeah. That was... Uh, my mom only had two wishes in life, she told me. She said to have a have a child and to say cottage for her when she passed. So I did both. Indeed. So that's nice. Winning. More or less. Not just that, but we have two grandchildren. But for those of you that don't know, we have um, Skylar actually, Marilyn died when I was pregnant with Skylar. And so Skylar's middle name, Morrison, is an M after Marilyn and my poppy, Murray. Also, why we're having weird, freaky things. My mom was actually born in, drumroll please, Hollywood, California. Hmm. And my grandfather or sorry, my great-grandfather, as we turned out, is buried here in Los Angeles. And the date of his burial is actually- Okay, but I have a question. It's the craziest thing. His funeral is the same date as like Skylar's like bar mitzvah. It's like a whole thing. It's the weirdest thing. And it's like in LA, it's the weirdest thing. It's nutty. Do my you, sister sent it to me. Do you think- And I was like, what is this date? Sorry, go on. I always thought it was odd what I, what I thought was actually really cool, because I really do believe in these types of things, that Skylar got your mother's eyes and she died while I was pregnant with him. Mm-hmm. And I just was like, and he came out with those piercing blue eyes like yeah. her mother. Um, do you think they would like our podcast, think it's ridiculous? And would they have agreed to be guests? I can answer that. Your dad would have loved this podcast. Oh, my podcast. dad would have. My dad- He was a, my biggest yeah, cheerleader. My dad, dad, as you know, took a very- it's sort of like your dad t- took a big interest in our life and, you know, followed everything was, you know, really, yeah, your biggest cheerleader. Kept telling me to start my st- a styling business. Yeah, he was, he was, um, he, he was very pro Rachel. And um, yeah, I think my dad would have loved to be on the podcast. My mom, my, you know, the thing about my mom is like, I would tell her what we were doing and she like totally didn't understand like she was just like oh that's wonderful you know like she couldn't understand why i dressed people yeah it that was, was just very like she wasn't really she wasn't really she thought it was because they couldn't dress themselves yeah she wasn't really up on like the business uh what we were doing she was just happy if we were happy you know my mom was super into just like family his family's good everyone's healthy like all good you know that was really what she wanted she didn't really have much more you know desire than that it's pretty simple Brain and lack of patience from dad, heart and blue eyes from your mom. Pretty much sums it up. That's my takeaway. Thanks for sharing, honey. I know it's not the easiest thing. No, to and share it's funny because I was I was actually just this week thinking like I kind of miss them a lot, and it's weird because there's a lot of people out there listening that don't have parents or only maybe have one parent. Well, so. it's funny, you know. I was not the like 
you know, I spoke to my parents like once a week, once a month, you know, like sidebar. I, I speak to mine every night for two yeah, hours. Yeah, I was not like that. <laughs> I was not like attached to them that way. Again, mm. I was much more independent. I may or may not have been glued to my mother's body until I met you. Yeah, I was like psyched to go to camp, psyched to go to hated camp. Yeah, I was psyched to go anywhere. Hated literally. going anywhere. No, I was always never out. left my parents. I, I, I was never life. home. Um, but in any event, um, as time goes on, it's just like. Uh, it just gets like a longer period of time. You're like, wow. It's like, I'm going to live like this forever. You know, you sort of sinks in. You're like, huh. They're not coming back. Yeah, they're not coming back. So um, moving on from the uh, ones that are no longer living to ones who are living. And are rightfully yours. Yes. I And that's the other thing. I think that, uh, you know, I mostly glommed down to your parents as mine. So they and also, the, and the best also... part And the best part about it is they love me so much more than they love you. So <laughs> I kind of, you know, you're out. That's it. I, I just do, kind of like did a little body morph. I do remember my mother at one point saying... He's really like the son I never had. And I always wanted a son because my daughters were so awful to me. <laughs> and yep. he's so nice to me. I'm like, brown nose. Oh my God. Even like last week, Leslie's like, my son-in-law would never do anything wrong. And I'm like, you're right, Leslie. I love you. And by the way, you look so skinny. <laughs> okay. Okay. So I want to talk about Sakara. I am someone who is not huge on doing cleanses and not eating solid food for a week and doing all of those things. I am from the East Coast, so I have found I'm just not one of those people. I have turned to Saqqara several times because I actually just wanted to get the nutrients I needed because I was feeling really tired, run down, I had been traveling a lot, working really hard. And I actually would do a week of Saqqara to just feel like I got all the nutrition I needed without thinking about it. And I know that when I'm eating the food, I'm getting really delicious plant-based food. It's easy and it's done for you. I also love the probiotics. I'm just saying they're chocolate. It feels like you're eating just pieces of chocolate. They're delicious. Um, and. I love their teas, they are wonderful, and I can't really say enough about how Saqqara makes me feel. It's done for you, all the work, you don't have to think about it, it takes all the planning out. I've actually put Roger on Saqqara a few times just because I felt like he was eating just so much bad food, and I just really love their approach to overall wellness. It's not about starving you. It's not about deprivation. It's about eating clean, delicious food that's so easy to travel with. It's so easy to bring to work. It's just so easy to eat and just ready for you. And it's really like the menu is really varied. The breakfasts are delicious. You've got like waffles and scones and muffins and all those types of things. And it's just very easy and it's really worked for me when I just wanted to feel healthier and have more energy. And, um, you know, you can use it however it works best for you, but I just felt like Saqqara is just one of the best that I've ever tried. Saqqara also offers daily wellness essentials like supplements and herbal teas to support your nutrition. Experience the transformative power of plants with their best-selling metabolism super powder, Made with organic raw cacao, it works to boost energy, eliminate bloating, minimize sugar cravings, and reduce fatigue. Right now, Saqqara is offering our listeners 20% off their first order when they go to saqqara.com slash though, or enter Z-O-E at checkout. That's Saqqara, S-A-K-A-R-A dot com slash though to get 20% off your first order. Saqqara.com slash though. Today, our guests are the reason I live and breathe because they are the very people who were kind enough to bring me into this world and give me life. They are the most loving, supportive, and only couple I know who have been together longer than Roger and I. I am talking about, drum roll please, my parents. Woo, Leslie. Otherwise known as. Leslie and Ron Rosenzweig. Welcome or, to the or show. known as Mimi and Papa. Or Les and Ron. Or Mimi and Papa, as my kids call them, because my mom didn't want to be called grandma. And so Mimi is what came out of that. 
Um, they are here for visiting us this weekend after 15 months apart. And they have the most incredible relationship story that I wanted to make sure they shared on our podcast. So welcome to Works For Us, Mom and Dad. It's nice to be here. <laughs> <laughs> That's for sure. Okay. A definite treat. I just want everyone to know I have not prepped them at all, so they have no idea what we'll be talking about because I believe, Roger and I believe, no prep should ever happen with these interviews because we like it to be organic. So usually, mom and dad, we ask, we start with everybody, sort of how they met, how it began. Um, I'm pretty sure you both remember. I want to hear about you guys in the short because this was 55 years ago, but I do think it would be an interesting story that people know that little fun fact about mom when you guys met. And let's see if we could find any parallels between their relationship and ours. Oh, that'd be interesting. So briefly, tell us um, the highlight of how you met and the low light, perhaps. Well, uh, I'll, I'll start off simply by saying yes. that my wife of 55 years has was always about to marry somebody. <laughs> <laughs> she... <laughs> She had boyfriends from the get-go. Most of them I know only by f old photographs and you know love letters and stuff like that that I've read over the years. But she was one of those women that was always had a guy, always was about to get to get married. I, on the other hand, was very very happy to be single, and um, and and in my era, um, met and and got married in a much older age than most people did at that time. Right. During those days, everybody got married between 20 and 22. And uh, I was 28 when I finally uh, did it and it lasted 55 years. Same so, age I got married. Right. True First story. So, so, True, true story. story. So I'll, I will hand it over to Leslie so she can tell you all of the different people. <laughs> well, I don't know that we want to hear about all the okay. different people. I just, but, but, how, but how we got to, the, how we got to, to meeting. When I graduated from college, I came home from California with my about-to-be fiancé to meet my parents. When I came home, I received a phone call from one of my best friends and one of Ron's best friends, and they lived right nearby. And a few days after I returned, I went to see them. I hadn't seen them in about 15 years. And they had just had a baby, and we spent the evening together. We reminisced. We caught up. It was great. And as I was leaving, Larry, Ronnie's best friend, said to his wife, wouldn't Leslie love to meet my best friend, Ronnie? And I said, I'm about to get married with a man I met in college, in, at college. And I brought him home to meet my parents. I'm really not interested. Long story short, fast forward, he took my number. He called my house for about a month and spoke to my sister almost every couple of days for a month. And my sister really- I was thought, persistent. My sister thought he was terrific. And I said, that sounds fabulous. Why don't you go out with him? So my sister said, okay. And she said to him, if you don't go out with my sister, do you have a brother? And he said, I do have a brother, but I still would like to meet your sister. Long story short, we had a date. I was actually with my fiance in New York and we met in the lobby of the hotel that he was staying in, in New York. And Ronnie came to pick me up for a date and we were going out to the village. Um, the, the, the hip, the hip, yeah, the hip bagel, the hip bagel, hip bagel for, for dinner. For dinner. <laughs> <laughs> and then uh, the premise. And to the premise where Ronnie was planning to meet Louise Lasser, who was Mary Hartman, Mary Hartman, Woody Allen's girlfriend. Right. And so I was a shill for Louise Lasser, and he was nobody <laughs> because we didn't care. So we had this lovely date, and I called my mother and I said, Mom, I'm not going to come home tonight. I'm going to stay at my coworker's apartment in New York because it's too far. And she said, what do you mean you're not coming home? I said, I'm not coming home. She said, I said, Mom, I've been away for a year and a half. Right. <laughs> and I'm not coming home tonight. Right. And she said, okay. And we had a date and we had a great time. And then a few days later, I'm not sure of the time frame at this point, 
uh, Ronnie called me and said, would you like to go out again? And I said, I would love to, but I'm getting married January 7th. And he said, how could that be? I said, I told you. He said, well, let's get together one more time to say goodbye. Very smart, Ronald. Very you know, smart. I'm a peddler. <laughs> <laughs> We meet at a friend's apartment in New York. Also known as a homewrecker, but I'm not going to get into that. We meet at a friend's apartment for a farewell, and we can take it from there, honey. (laughs) Those famous lines? Oh, God. That's up to you, honey. Well, I did Uh, Not if it's inappropriate. No. So I do have to say that on uh, a podcast, you can't see my lovely wife, but she was as lovelier as lovely then as she is now and even lovelier and younger. And we were sitting there and we were going back and forth and I'm saying it's a little crazy. We just got to know each other, blah, blah, blah. Give it a chance. And I said something about, I love the way the sun reflects off the tip of your nose. Oh, really? And, yeah. That's yes. what did it? Yeah. <laughs> oh, that's horrible. I and, actually and then, think and that's then, magical. Right. You never said that to and me. Then, <laughs> I never had to, sweetheart. And then I said, then I said, why don't we just why don't we just take the gamble? And it was double entendre, G A M B O L going through the woods and a gamble on What'll happen? A gamble will be a stroll in the olden times. People might have used that word <laughs> right. in pre 1900s. Right. And in Bridgerton, it's called promenade. Yes. And uh, she said, I guess so. <laughs> and that was it. That was it wasn't it. It, well, it was then, way then, more complicated. And, than that. and then, you know, then for a period of time, she Very was weekending. Of she was dating every, both other, of every you. other Boston weekend. And New yeah. York. Right. yeah. 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 Just yeah. deciding which man would curry her favor. You yeah. can tell him how it happened. Okay, so in February, the middle of February of that year. Year was? 1964. Okay. Right? No, it was 65. February and again, 65. those of you who can't see my mom, she was, she is still gorgeous. Right. But she was beautiful. It, it was beautiful. <laughs> it was. It, I was a pretty good looking guy. You were so handsome. You are so. Was, you still are handsome. I was but not you trash. Were really I was not handsome. trash. So he, <laughs> really he, handsome. He invites me to go to Vermont for a ski weekend. <laughs> oh, that's right. We drive to Vermont in a convertible in the middle of February. Could you imagine? No. I would never be doing that <laughs> now. <laughs> And with the top down. For a ski, for, for for top so, down with a ski weekend and she never skied in I her never life. never skied. He gets me a lesson with Stein Erickson. Right. Who the was Stein time, Erickson. The Stein Erickson. Wow. He takes me into the ski shop and all the way up he picks out my ski boots. He laces them up for about an hour. <laughs> oh, my God. Brings me to the spot where Stein Erickson is supposed to pick me up. And of and course, I says, was going to go skiing myself. And he, and he did. And he did. And he leaves me there waiting for my lesson. I'm standing there with my poles and my skis. And he puts me on this little plateau. And he leaves. And he says, goodbye. Have a great lesson with Stein. <laughs> and I say, have a great ski. And I'm standing there. And this huge gust of wind comes along. And I happen to be standing on ice, but I didn't know it. And it blows me to the edge of a cliff, backwards, backwards, to the edge of a cliff, where I didn't know how to start or stop those things. So all I did was I said, I don't know what's going to happen, but I'm going over this cliff. So I throw myself on the ground. Stein Erickson appears to pick me up, and I say, can you you take me back to the lodge where I can take (laughs) off my skis and my poles? And thank you so much. We're happy to pay for the lesson, but I'm never going skiing again. (laughs) But we did have a great weekend. We stayed at this little inn, and yeah, we're having breakfast yes, one morning. Yes. This is, and, and the person next to me says, oh, Mrs. Rosenzweig, can you pass the cereal? Oh, Mrs. Rosenzweig, and I'm sitting there, and Ronnie goes like this. To me. <laughs> he goes, Mrs. Rosenzweig, pass the cereal. <laughs> So I said, oh, yes, the cereal. We we had no clue, no clue. So I said, yes, Mrs. Rose. (laughs) It was the first time I ever heard the name. I said, Mrs. Rose, that's why, would you please? (laughs) Pass the cereal. (laughs) We had a lovely weekend. We really did. And we then started, I started doing double, double duty, couldn't, trying to make up my mind, which took about six months, something like that, whatever. Yeah. Round about summer, we go to Fire Island. Ronnie takes a share in a share house with all his friends and many others, including Spitzers and other friends. And Uncle we're still their best friend today. 
Yes. They, we have eight couples and a share house in Fire Island, and we spent the summer, you know, and that was it. there. And then I got a, you know, or, no, way before that, actually, Ronnie gave me an, I don't know if it's going to work, but I think you need to make up your mind. And, you know, I went through the process. Sure. And yeah. Yeah. History. I'm just going to say you made a good choice. I'm just going to say Well, the best I can only choice. tell you that my mother lost 25 pounds <laughs> thinking <laughs> that I was going to marry the person from California because she pictured me living on orange crates and no furniture for the rest of my life. Right. This, and this that was, was a, not her wish. Yeah. Uh, should, uh, we should add that Leslie, we, we were both brought up in New York and we went to the kind of city college system. I went to city college. She went to Hunter College. She was going out with somebody else in Hunter College and another person. Then she broke up with that person and she went out to Cal Berkeley. And there she met an entirely different group of people. It was right in the middle 1964. of 1964. Yeah, it was yeah. in the middle of the hippie movement. It was free speech. Uh, we call Mario, it. We yes, call free, free, free speech. Free speech movement. The free speech movement, hippies, and all that kind of stuff. Hate Ashbury, and, right? And, right, hate Drugs, Ashbury. All that. And so that was that was the life that she was living, and that and was loving, the life that she would, it. she would have been. Yeah, she would have been married, marrying into. So that was like a little. So her Grandma mother, Sally her mother, was not Her mother down. had problems with that. The yeah. reason I ended up having to come back is because my father was watching TV and saw me getting pulled off in a paddy wagon at one of my protests. <laughs> right. And he said to right. me, right. get the home. Because <laughs> You can, can curse on podcasts, Get actually. the home. <laughs> but you did graduate. I, mean, I did you, graduate. You graduate. I did yeah. graduate with so, a lot of credit. So you finally got engaged and you got married. I never got engaged. Okay, so you got, got married. married. So what was, so you never got a ring? I, I got a ring, but Aww. I returned it. It came from Harry Winston. He bought me a two carat. Every dollar he had went to this ring. Pretty much. He got her a Harry Winston diamond ring with every dollar he had and gave so it like to what, her. And by the she way, I did the same thing for you. It. I did she the returned same thing. it. Only because, but I didn't like diamonds or furs or anything at that time. Well, let's <laughs> to change. To the manner born, for, for right? Those, for those who are listening, that changed a lot over the 55 years. <laughs> I mean, I didn't feel, no, we it right. felt when I was riding on the bus to school. She was I a teacher. teacher. I used to teach after Radio Free Europe. I used to teach in the East Bronx. And I had this thing on my finger and felt really weird. Mm -hmm. So I said, let's just give it back and get it later on sometime. Because right now it's not and for so me. So I think I got her a diamond pin. You I got me a pin. I got you a diamond pin just to have something. Which is now Pamela's ears and Sophie's ears. Right. All the pins I took apart. Broke, yeah, That's cool. Yeah. Yeah, that was that. Was that so. so can I ask you <laughs> another question? The person you were supposed to marry, the fiancé, did he give you a ring? No, not not at the time because I hadn't accepted. Oh, wasn't official. Wow. That was a, came okay. home to meet the family. Well, thank God because if he had handed you a ring and then you said no, that would have been way worse. No, I was wondering what happened. Well, to the you ring. give it back. Yeah. <laughs> All right, moving right along. So, wedding. Where was the wedding? <laughs> oh my God, my mom hated this wedding so much. Oh my God, Roger. she's laughing. She Roger. hated it. Roger, she this hated is it. this is what I wanted, and I'll tell you what I had. Let me <laughs> we just tell the one God. story. God. We, <laughs> we married. We got married because it was. A, don't it say was, where. Yeah, it was a, but, but don't it was say a pre yet. Okay, don't say it yet. There was a precursor, Mom. I yeah. just want a champagne brunch on a Sunday at the pier. This was my mom to her mom. And we also talked about doing something in Fire Island on, yes, the, on the right, beach on the with, beach, a, right. you know, with some friends just and friends, just family small, and all that sort of wedding. thing. Yeah. No. No way was his family hearing of it. They wanted Whoa. the wedding of the weddings. Mm -hmm. Every person they ever knew, wherever it was, and guess what we had? I don't even know if it exists anymore. It was something called the... Huntington ha Townhouse, Townhouse right. which was a bridal factory, mm -hmm. yeah. and we everyone Bride and groom we, we got married on Thanksgiving because that was we wanted to get married in a hurry, not for any particular reason, but <laughs> we wanted it over, and we got married on Thanksgiving Day. We had three hundred guests. No way. Yes way, and we had. I had it was in a bridal factory, and there were eight weddings that day. <laughs> and when they announced the wedding, they invited people to the wedding of Mr. and Mrs. Roland Rosenwig. <laughs> Please <laughs> enter the chapel. Right. Okay, right. then... Correct name, Ronald Rosenzweig. <laughs> right. yes. Then 
It was the, the same o- number of letters. The <laughs> only thing that I ever wanted if I was having that kind of a wedding was I had a beautiful gown by someone named Skazi. Yes, of course. And Arnold Skazi. T- yeah, and I have, it's really, it was a beautiful, a beautiful dress. And I wanted- You wouldn't expect anything different. No, then. but I didn't know anything. You know, it was just what I liked. It was this yeah. beautiful gown. And it it wasn't frewy. It was just very tailored. No, it was a column. It, had, it, it was had, a column with a fish tail. It, it was, yeah. And it, it had a- Long sleeves. A thing that went over it, which you could take off. But I wanted a, a very dramatic veil. Very fortuitous. Five layers of tulle. And two blushers. And my best friend, who introduced me as the, here comes the bride. (laughs) Here comes the bride. My friend comes over to kiss me. Good luck with a cigarette in her hand. Carol. Carol. (laughs) First, all of a sudden, I'm with my father. Here comes the bride. Flames. (laughs) Flames. Flames. That is amazing. Flames. That is amazing. (laughs) What to do? Father, panicking. I'm getting whiter by the minute, and he's holding me up, and the veil is burning. So he, my my father, takes the two layers, the, the two blushers, and the, and, a, and a one other layer, rips them off from the puts the fire from, out first, puts the fire out, <laughs> and tears off three layers. Didn't even get down the aisle yet, and I'm already in trouble. In my flames. <laughs> Okay, so down another, the aisle, instead of Ronnie's fa- parents are carrying him. I, I'm right. sorry, instead of, instead of father of the bride, it was fire of oh, the bride. Fire, <laughs> Just fire bride, bride on fire. <laughs> bride on bride on fire, right. Yes. right. We get down, Ronnie wouldn't let him. I wanted his father to come out of the rabbi's study and Do just you want carry to him to come, out of- to come out of the study and his father walked no they no. both had to carry him down the aisle it's a long list of things that I <laughs> a long list I mean, many, many my mind way, this over sounds years. very similar to my way why with carry Rachel. him was he wasted already <laughs> no. oh dad no no, no, no. carry <laughs> meaning his mother and father oh, right. carried him yes. instead of him coming and greeting got me, it which was i thought she a lot. had her oh, she I had, had her my, style i had my style was everybody else right so so shocking yes so that's the point and as we get up, because this is a factory rabbi who knew nothing about us, we never had an interview with them. <laughs> Matt, l- 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 you tell. Me, no, you oh, no, no, I'll, I'll let ahead, you, you tell. tell. No, you but, tell. But I'll just tell how, how it was from my standpoint. So the thing with multivitamins for me is I've always struggled with them because I feel like I don't get enough nutrients from my food and I've always believed in taking vitamins and supplementing what your body needs. That said, it's been a struggle as an adult because as a kid, I just took the chewables and it was super easy. And I took one a day. And then as I became an adult, it just became the constant task of trying to find a really good one without fillers and anything bad in it. But all of them were either so big and hard for me to swallow, so I dreaded taking them and never did, or you had to take like four to six of them a day to get the dosage and they were huge and they left a terrible taste in my mouth and really honestly all I got was kind of nauseous and didn't want to take my vitamins so that's a little bit counterproductive I think then I discovered ritual and ritual is just taking two a day which is life-changing they're small and they taste good they have a little bit of a minty flavor and you only have to take two and they're time release so I don't get nauseous you only take two I do one in the morning and one at night, and I never forget to take them. So that's really mission accomplished, and I've really become obsessed with Ritual. And I believe that Ritual is truly reimagined multivitamins, and I think that everyone should really give them a try. Uh, Multivitamins should really contain all the key nutrients that your body can actually use without all of the fillers and the extras that you actually don't know what they are when you read them on the bottle. Ritual's delayed release capsule design delivers high quality nutrients, including vitamin D3 in just two daily pills. I repeat, two daily pills, because trust me, that makes a difference, at least for me. And Ritual capsules are certified vegan, non-GMO, and they are gluten and allergen free. So try Ritual today and get key nutrients without the BS. Ritual is offering my listeners 10% off during your first three months. Visit ritual.com slash works to start your ritual today. So I wasn't through any of this because I was waiting just to go walk down the aisle with right. my mother and father, right, taking us down. And all I prayed, because there were eight people 
eight weddings going on that when they lifted the veil, it would be Leslie. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't know. I mean, I, when you walked into the lobby of this place, there were brides walking this way. <laughs> <laughs> that way. It literally was. It was, it, was like, it was the opposite of a romantic wedding. Let's just say, oh, my God. Let's say that. Oh, my God. And so that was, thank God, when I saw her, that, that they... Like looked around. And I said, "Okay, I got the right one." That's a good thing. <laughs> then the rabbi began to speak, and the first thing he said was, "Marriage is like a ship at sea, a little rocky, a little stormy." And I said to Ronnie, "I'm going to throw up. <laughs> Get me out of here." It was so I lovely. did. I did. I was so some days miserable. You have to go. You go into I was a so, port. Sometimes some days you, go it, you can't even make this circle. It was like right out of a can. Yeah. Sermon. Yeah. He didn't even know our name. I mean, it is so sad. Yeah. So sad. Right. And it was in, you know, and it was really, when. It, and then we had, in those days, we had something called the reception line. So they put, they put your my veils, what were left of them, <laughs> over a chair because they were so long. And as we, I'm shaking hands, one of the waiters decides, this chair doesn't belong here. I'll just take the chair with me, <laughs> with me and the rest of my veil. <laughs> That's so great. So you you could not make you could not make this up. Really, you could not make this up. Okay, so wait. So End we have story. this crazy wedding. Yes, we do. You get married, oh, you laugh on, about the on, whole thing. On Turkey Day with rubber turkey. Yeah. Literally <laughs> Three hundred people gave up family dinner, <laughs> we, and the well, turkey we literally because... bounced off the plate. That's, that's the be- that was the for biggest. those of you that don't know my mother. Most of you don't. That is her living. That is her version of of hell. Actually, <laughs> like, was, was like actual hell. I said, where where do we go from here? Okay, so you both have mentioned to me over the years to Roger and I both that for your day. You had children very late. So my question is, did you always know that you would have kids or is that a decision that came later? And I know part of it, but I think, as Roger would say, this could be another parallel (laughs) where you Hmm. may have had to nudge mom a little bit. Um, Is that true? And if so, tell me the the truth. Did you always know? You know, I I would say that we just never really... It wasn't a really heavy topic of conversation, like we're getting married to have children. Right, right. We, you know, but in I, those I, days, I think, everyone got married to have yes, children. Yes, and I, really? yeah, and I was, I was assumed we would have children. Right. She was, Leslie was going to take her own time to decide whether she was or not. You know, so and when she was, you know, that and would you say that was true? Yes. Yes, that was it, and then. Um, so how long did you have wait to have children? For long. Those days long. How long, long? For, Ron, for three years for Pamela. Mm-hmm. Yeah, three years. So twenty six. Right. Yeah, I was married. You were twenty eight when you had Pamela. No, twenty six. She was one of my twenty sixth birthday. I thought you had me at thirty. Twenty. No, he was thirty. Got it. No, he was thirty one. Oh. Actually, I was. Uh, I uh, Pamela was born on my twenty sixth birthday. My, yeah, but one week before my thirty first birthday. Got it. Which is so. old in those days. Yeah, yeah, yeah for oh, yeah. sure. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And then Rachel, three years later. When was the most beautiful woman in the world born? <laughs> three years later. September 1st. No. September 1st. September 1st. Right. 1991. Right. 1991. Yeah. 1991. <laughs> 13 years later. <laughs> I waited a really long time. but You I just wanted a new baby all over again. All over well, again. The advantage of this thing is you can edit. <laughs> The advantage of this thing is the Google machine that (laughs) nobody can lie about anything. So very, very, very interesting. But I think one of the things that I definitely want to ask, because I think this is um, something that Roger and I get asked a lot, is that I guess the question is, I mean, I kind of know because I've lived with you most of my life, but how do you make sure that you get a a space from one another that you get like breathing time because knowing you my entire life, there is this amazing ability and something people always say to Roger and I is that we bicker. Like I always say, we're a little like Lucy and Ricky, you know, but our recovery time is really quick. It's like, we'll say something, we'll yell at each other. And then it's like, okay, what do you want to eat? And I think for you, I've always noticed that you have, I always say one of the, the, the secrets of your, relationship for you guys is that you both have your own lives, but your together lives. 
but you can't live without each other, but you really do have your own things, which I think is so important. But how do you give each other space? I mean, obviously, mom will just say, get out, leave the room. No, I'm just kidding. Actually, just to be okay, to go go segue on what Rachel says, really easy initially because daddy started two companies. Right. And he when he started, he worked, he was gone and traveling. And then he, they decided, he, the partners decided daddy would be the, the, uh, ultimately the, the president and CEO yeah. and that he would be, so he did all the international sales and that's when I started to go with him and he was gone, you know, when I wasn't with him, he was gone a lot, a lot, a lot. So we didn't have any space issues at that point. Right. And I always had, a, you know, some sort of a business of some kind, right. always. Right. My whole life. And then we became, you know, serious art collectors very right. early on, which took a huge chunk of our life, which also you know, gave us a huge bond. Right, I was going to say, that I feel like that was a thing you did together. Right, always. and also travel together. Yeah, uh, and Always, and yeah. I, we love to travel. Right. What has been your favorite trip? Well, well I want to stay on space for a second. Oh. So, because I think it's important. I think it's important when you're together for 55 years that you know when you need alone time. Yeah, I, I, Especially I, wanna, in COVID. I want to answer it just slightly differently, okay. a little off axis, is one of the reasons I didn't get married early on is you know the the you know the women that I met or you know in New York growing up were all very similar right and they were kind of all attached and a lot of them wanted to get married you know that was their thing and and I wanted somebody different I always said that I I think that I might have never uh, met or, or married mom if it, if she hadn't gone to California for a year and a half right because that made her a very, very different kind of um, of a person with different interests, different attitudes, you know, at that at that time. So I always was attracted to somebody that was independent. Right. And I think that, that both of us did a lot to raising you and your sister to yes. be independent. So yes. I always believed in that a woman should be independent. I didn't want somebody that was dependent on me. Right. I wanted somebody that could do her own thing, had her own thing, and that I could do my own thing. So right. I could... I could move around and do something else. So yep. to me, it was all, you know, it was very important. And then, you know, she said I would, when, when we got married about three years later, at the same, at the same week that Pamela was born, I started my first company. Same day. <laughs> yeah. Well, you same know. day. You left yeah. to sign the documents. Yeah. I, I, he left. He said, yeah. see ya. Yeah. That's right. That's right. That's right. He did I, say, see ya. I have to I put money c- in the meter bu- and I'm leaving. Yeah. I bought, I bought cigars to, uh, to give to the guys I work with. <laughs> and then, and then I told the company that I was leaving, and that was and that was it. And then, so the the next, you know, a week within a week of Pamela being born, I was, you know, on an entrepreneurial, you know, direction that that lasted for the rest of my life in different different forms. Yep. So I was independent, and and as an example of that, um, when we decided to start a company, uh, Leslie became pregnant with our first right. uh, first child, and I had to ask. I said, "How do you feel if this thing doesn't work? We probably don't, don't have, have any leave. money. No, we, won't. <laughs> we won't have any money. Well, we didn't have any money then. <laughs> then we right. have, that, and we'd have a more risk, and we'd also um, probably couldn't stay in New York, New Jersey, because the nature of what I was doing, right. I would have gone to Arizona or right. Cal- L.A. or San right. Francisco or something like that. And I said, "How do you feel about that?" And she said, "Go for it." So that was the thing. So I, so. You know, having somebody who was independent, right, paid and, a risk taker. and a risk taker, and a risk taker, and a risk taker, exactly right, um, and smart, so, and smart. I mean, you know, smart was incredibly important. Yeah. So was and is. So so those are you know those are kind of all the you know from my standpoint that was. But the, I do think there's a comfort level in when I think it's a big thing in any successful relationship to be able to say I need to be alone. I need me time. I need, you need to leave. Like, I just need a minute. But what happens is as you get more into the relationship, that feeling is so instinctual. Right. In other words, right. when I take a walk at, when I'm walking out of, he's sitting at the table, the dinner table, <laughs> you know, and I'm saying, see ya. You know, whatever. <laughs> if we're not, you know, always just, what are, you know, what are we doing tonight? I mean, that's all changed right. over the last years. But I'll say, you know, when I need to be, in my place, he right. has his place, and right. no discussion. Right. Yeah. I mean, he wants me to watch movies with him all the time. Sometimes I do. Sometimes we right. watch it. But 
there's no issue with that because right. he loves sports. And she I don't. never, she never became a serious Mets fan. She never became a serious <laughs> Giants fan. I was fan. a Giants fan in our early part of yeah, the was. relationship. Yeah. Well, that's because you dated, dated a guy gi- who played I for dated the Giants. Giants. <laughs> right. I, I love going back, to, going oh, back to my other thesis. She was always about to get married. <laughs> well, I wasn't going to marry them, but I was very serious with a New York Giant football player. <laughs> right. And, Steve Thurlow was his name, actually. Okay, what is... I actually don't know the answer to this. And if it's really gnarly, then maybe don't tell me. I have to pretend you're not my parents. But what is the absolute biggest fight you've ever been in? Usually over over one of you, your sister and you, usually. Oh. And, and, some, and a money thing. Money. We've had right. two money issues, you know, where I have suggested... <laughs> That, you know, usually in the selling of stock in the company <laughs> about I've changing heard, your life. I've heard this story before. Yeah, well, it was, a, it was yeah. the most, Roger, honestly, I, you know, the answer is what you have to learn is your wife is always right and you're always wrong. And the sooner you learn that, the sooner you learn that, the better you'll be. Are you kidding me? I learned that a long time well, ago. Why do you, you think you I'm still with early. her? And by the way, the other thing I was going to say is it's obvious why they're still together because Ronnie does everything that Leslie says. <laughs> no, only, uh-uh. Duh. Not if he doesn't want to. Yes, by the way, no, it's no, very there's similar. A, there's another parallel. That's no. what I always say. I, to, I, give you 80, I give you 80% because I don't care about 80%. The 20% I care with, I got to exactly do. I got to right. do. do. He doesn't right. care. And I'm not I asking. I'm, I don't do big asks no. anymore. We we're usually on the same page pretty and, much. And, you know, an example of it is recently is, let's say, 10 or 15 years ago, because I was always a huge music fan and jazz fan and all that sort of stuff. And I met some people that, that went regularly to New Orleans for jazz oh, fest, the single yeah. guys. And one one day at talk, and he was married, married guy, and he said, you know, I do that. And I asked, Les, do you mind if I would go with him, go for five days, six days, go to the jazz fest, you know, and stuff like that. My dad like is that. talking and about she said, the and she music said, festival sure. in New Orleans called Jazz Fest, the annual right. jazz fest yeah, festival. No, jazz that, fest. Yes, my 83-year-old dad still likes to to, to yes, do every yeah, year. Yeah, he, did, he missed that. last year. He missed he last year because of COVID, COVID. <laughs> but otherwise right. he'd still, still be So right. I think that Leslie, you and Rachel should have a lot more loan time and you should teach her, <laughs> teach her that, you know, the fact that if I do want to go away with my friends, but let's you, say to Vegas. But you do, or let's you do, say, right. you do right. Well, but there's, okay, but there's anyway. a bit of a knockdown, drag down okay. fight each time it happens. So Les... Yeah. Thank you so much for your insight on the show. <laughs> well, I have to say, I have to say. They are not alike, uh, totally. There's a lot of but similarities. There are so many right. similarities. Though. There are so many, many similarities, similarities right. but there are many differences but Roger, you too. also are a couple who works together. Right. So it's a very different division of responsibility. Right. I mean, I pretty much managed everything in the family, and we had a lot of, a lot of separateness. I mean, I, my father traveled his whole life when my sister and I were brought up, and I... Really, because my mother also worked full time, mm-hmm. I was really the caretaker, and you know, of my sister and the family, and mm-hmm. I had a huge amount of responsibility from a really young age. I'm going to say ten, and um, my whole life I was that person. So it was defined, you know, pretty much who I was. I wasn't like a normal child. So I feel that as business partners, you are coming from a different place. And I, but I do feel. Well, this was before we were business partners, but keep going, Leslie. Keep go- no, I'm it saying matter, that it's, it's still a division. <laughs> you know what? You it's need, still a division. But of- you need to. You need to. That's something that you you talk out, Ronnie. This is recent that he started. Tra- you know, recent more recently that he's been doing stuff on his own. But a couple of times he went on guys ski trips because he needed to do that, and I didn't yeah. want to go anymore. I hung it up, and you know it's fine for me because what. With all of you, as your life goes on, you develop a lot of interests. I mean, I had tons of things that I would do. I would take some trips without him because of the timing and whatever. You know, as an independent person, you find your way. And don't I forget, agree. you have a lot of responsibility now with a child. And you're, and, My yeah. children were older, so I yeah. was able to do things. And, you know? and I think that's where the art world came into yeah. because you could always... Very important. You know, she was always you know, going to... you know. Galleries and museums and doing Trips all that stuff, which things. which we would do together. But she could do it on her own. Had a business that Aziz did that as well. Yeah. Yeah. I had a business that you know into that we the arts. I came up with the name. Business with art. It was an art business. <laughs> right. And um, you know, I we did. You know, I was always working in something I loved. She was always doing something that was driven by passion. Yeah. Always. Yeah. But the truth is, they have a mutual respect for each other, and that's why it works. Bottom line. I mean, I think, and independent, but together. And I do think art, but I I think also for all of our listeners, I think it's very important to know that my parents have always been way cooler 
than Roger and I. <laughs> that's um, for sure. That's they right. are that's way true. more. No, I don't think they so. are way more say. active. They. Um, little known fact: I speak to my mom almost every night until almost three a.m. her time, um, when I'm dying to go to sleep, and uh, and they are very active. And I think. Uh, you know, my dad's 83. Sorry, dad. I'm not going to say my mom's age. She's not that, but she's close. Sorry. Not <laughs> even. A little close. A, a couple of years behind. No, five. But. Five. But, That's but, a lot of years. True story. But um, I want to know what is your advice? Because uh, I think it's very important to know. Because I think most of the people that we talk to are not your age. Um, and happily married after 55 years. But what is your advice to couples who are like, dreaming to have a lasting forever relationship because people the reason we started works for us was because people marvel that we work together we parent together that we're together this long and how much we still love each other and so if you take 30 years and you do 55 years what's the secret babe what would you say is the best part of us having our own company i definitely think it's the team the people we've hired watching them grow be successful. I think that's super gratifying. I totally agree. What would you say is the worst part? Well, making sure you're actually hiring the right people. That's the worst part about owning your own company. And the fact that we never have a day off. I would agree with that because we really <laughs> actually never do have a day off. Okay. So, right. We certainly have a dream team, but clearly you and I both know that did not happen overnight. So if you're looking to hire, make your life easier and use Indeed. Indeed is the job site that makes hiring as easy as one, two, three. Post, screen, and interview all on Indeed. Get your quality shortlist of candidates whose resumes on Indeed match your job description faster. Only pay for the candidates that meet your must-have qualifications and schedule and complete video interviews in your Indeed dashboard. Get your quality shortlist of candidates whose resumes on Indeed match your job description faster only pay for the candidates that meet must-have qualifications and schedule and complete video interviews in your Indeed dashboard. Indeed makes connecting with and hiring the right talent fast and easy. With tools like Indeed Instant Match, giving you quality candidates whose resume on Indeed fits your job description immediately. And Indeed skills tests that on average reduces hiring time by 27%. You can choose from more than 130 skills tests or add your own, then add your must-have requirements so you only pay for applicants that meet them. According to Talent Nest, Indeed delivers four times more hires than all other job sites combined. If you're hiring, you need Indeed. Get started right now with a free $75 sponsored job credit to upgrade your job post at indeed.com slash what works for us. Get a $75 credit at indeed.com slash what works for us. Indeed.com slash what works for us. Offer valid through June 30th. Terms and conditions apply. And so if you take 30 years and you do 55 years, what's the secret? Keep it interesting. Keep it interesting. Just, yeah, right. Like I am always on the next activity. Right. I'm always on the next thing that we're doing. Don't get old and boring. Never. You know, keep it interesting. And here's the newest one. Develop new pathways in your brain. Because uh, Sanjay Gupta's book, the old pathways start to close up. But if you're working on new pathways, then they, you don't, you're less likely to have brain issues. And you will be more vital and more stimulated and do all the things in, you know, in this world that are available to us to keep it interesting. So the, the example that I would give is when she's not talking to you at three in the morning, she's playing bridge right. with a robot. Right. <laughs> or Because or, those of her friends are long gone to sleep. <laughs> but she found robots and uh, and she loves to beat a robot, you know, so that's, a, you know, so it's competitive and it's stimulating and uh, that kind of thing. But we've always gone to well, theater. So we, we've always read, we've always... You know, read things, read reviews. We you know devour the New York Times and we read all theater. the time. No, you're the most yeah, cultured two no, people we, I actually yeah. know. No, I've never yeah. in my life. Yeah, I, I Roger and I are. I'm a heathen. To, to, I'm a heathen. You're what? I'm a heathen. <laughs> no, but your kids will. You'll be forced to become. 
that way because of your children. We used to drag them to every museum. Yes. To, because they had, And Rachel would go into a museum. She saw a Jonathan Borofsky exhibit with one right. of her friends, and it was Chattering Man. And um, he, he, she said to her, and there were a whole bunch of garbage cans yeah, he did in the Whitney with Museum garbage with garbage right. pails. And Rachel said, see, I told you, even garbage pails are works of <laughs> I remember all that. Right. All right. Yeah. Yes. But but they we jammed it down their throat. And listen, the truth is Is that why you won't go to any galleries with me, Rachel? <laughs> yeah. Probably, and, and probably. I, you know, and I will say I'm not sure it was that, right. any, it, that any of it uh, took. Right. You know, right. <laughs> that well, I love took. it. Look at my house. I take all the hand me downs. Right. Okay. Yeah. Different yeah. So you had it in a different way and you have your creative way of doing things. But you know, Pamela is not that interested, so in that kind of but stuff. But Luke so, is. You know, Luke is, and yeah, Sophie we're is. Luke. Yeah, we're so. getting there. But I them. always say it's for. I honestly think if I didn't work as hard as I did, I'd be a lot more immersed in it. I just yeah. don't think I have a lot of brain left. And I always say, when I grow up, we're going to be really deep into art. Yeah. You know. Yeah. yeah well, I think it's. I think for me, I'm such an all or nothing person. I think when I, when I'm ready, I'm going to be. But the really fun, the real fun part of it was. That we became very active collectors with a very very small budget and very little money. We were always paying things off, and we just loved it so much that you know we it just became such a passion. And we met the most art people are so interesting, and they're yeah, just so wonderful as you've learned, you know, with your recent experience. And that you know people just really, it's just a whole other world. And anything we also belong to something called Young Presidents. So we traveled extensively with them all over the world. So we had so a lot advice, of... So your advice, Mom, is keep it interesting. Don't get old and boring. Exactly. And, and try don't, what's and yours? don't be totally. afraid to try new things. Okay. You know, meet new people and... Totally. Yes. I'm okay. Dad, down, what's I'm yours? I'm with all of What's that? yours? No, and, I, and I think also we, we've always had a very wide circle of friends. Right. Very wide. Yeah, and so like keeping have, it to three hundred at our wedding yeah. was hard. Two eighty <laughs> right, right. was was yeah. a task. I think yeah. they lost friends over it. Right. So I mean, yeah. So I mean, that was you know that was also you know part of it because we had people that were friendly from neighborhoods, people right. were friendly from traveling, people were friendly from you know YPO, but then art world friends, right? Very social. Well, yeah. you did too. You had a huge we group at your, we- at your wedding. Yeah. You had well, yeah, we have, we we're have very tons. social. We have tons of friends. I think for us, interestingly enough, is, you know, I never really got the art bug. And I don't know if I ever will, to be May honest. Um, but I think the parallel for, for me and maybe Rachel even is, you know, we've been very involved in like startups and investing and things like that. And for yeah. me, meeting those people is, you know, I guess they're, I guess for your, you know, they're, for you guys who are into art, so they're creating like the next you know, it's what's next, next in thing. art. And for me, you know, especially Business. with tech and whatever, it's like, well, they're creating what's next in, like, you know, technology yeah. or whatever. And that's what, you know, for whatever reason, I'm interested in that. So again, we don't necessarily have the money to put in all no, these startups, no, no, but no, no, we've no. done it over a decade and we, yeah. with the limited budget, and we've done very well. And I think that's something we're continuing to do. But, but you have that, a huge amount of opportunity to do that. I well, think, so is, I think we, the takeaway on well, that- Well, you did with art, right? You we got did with our own businesses. We started two businesses and we- how to raise a lot of money to do but that. But I think I think the takeaway and how to make a relationship last is keep it interesting, have your independence, space, and find something that you could do together. Find and, something and to, you a lot can of do together. together. Yes. And together this. Right. And keep a wide circle of friends because it 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 keeps things from getting redundant. And travel right. if possible and do different things. And try adventures. to leave some time for your family. Yes. Because they're the best. Right. <laughs> Right. And okay, so this is um, our favorite part where we show. ask you guys five questions. It's like the newlywed game. <laughs> and you have to answer it. Okay, mom, who would you cast in a movie to play dad? I know the answer. Oh, I know the Sean answer. Connery. Thank you. I knew that. Obviously, dad, I know the answer to this because it's her twin, but who would play mom? Well, not any the, the longer. Lady, the lady with the poodle in her lap. It's with the with the Maltese that the mom Maltese had that and mom died had, at seventeen. Yes, yes. The, the, lo- the lovely Liz Taylor, who is a clone for Leslie. Yes, um, for sure. Uh, okay, uh, babe, you want to pick? Except she has eight husbands. That was, your, that, was <laughs> that was the difference. <laughs> she actually did marry eight people. <laughs> she, really, uh, she really did like the diamonds. Uh, okay, last question. Let's see which question. We I already like. know the hangover one. Who's likely to be more hungover no, after that's a night? Silly. That's a silly Dad. one. Dad. Well, because wife doesn't drink. Right. Wife drinks like this wife. <laughs> Half a glass of wine for the night. Actually, it's cranberry juice and sparkling water. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> I switched. 
Not when I married her. She was more of a drinker. No, I always really was a drinker when we were eaters. Well, you're still eaters. All right. I think I'm going to go with... Foodies. I think I'm going to go with... Only because they're such foodies. Last meal. It, you mean last what will meal, be my what, last meal? No, what no, no. Be, what will Ronnie's what's, what's last Dad's, meal be? What's and Dad's what is last your last meal? Oh, you have to tell you me have to his tell last me meal. His oh, his last meal, meal is going to be foie gras. I was going to say that foie okay. gras and some kind of brains, sweet breads, <laughs> sweet breads, <laughs> sweet breads. Oh, this is meaty. <laughs> what are you, Hannibal Lecter? No, yeah. he, lo- he loves. Uh, <laughs> He that's loves a carnivore. That's, no, he just loves those things, and he loves all kinds of exotic with a wonderful, pastas. With a wonderful wine with it. With a fabulous bottle of wine, yeah. okay, and a yeah. gorgeous dessert. And it yeah. would probably be, it, do you want to know where it would be? It would be in Italy or France, right. for mm-hmm. sure. Right. And probably, if we could pick, it would be a tartatan for dessert. And a tartatan for dessert. Right. Right. Okay, you know what the good news is? I would have guessed that. <laughs> I would have guessed that. I even think I know moms. So oh, I don't okay. even know mine, but I, I might. I do. Well, whatever it is, you're going to say it's wrong. So no, go, go for it, Ronnie. Right. Let's What's hear. What's my last meal? Give a try, Dad. Uh, if you don't know it, he's never going to get it. Well, it's probably changed now. Over the yeah, years, but you know, figure yeah. out what it would have been. Yeah, what it would have been. You know. Um, Can I guess? Yes. Yeah. All right, Dad, something. I'm going to go with some caviar to start. Oh, oh I good. forgot caviar. Yes. And the yes. entree would yes. be duck. Yes. I think like a, nice a really duck. beautiful duck yeah. Yeah. or, yeah. or yeah. the most perfect veal chop she could ever have. And it has to be like perfectly cooked because if it's not, she won't even bite it. And it's got to be juicy and rare. Mm-hmm. I'm d- it's, well, she it's says duck very, is your favorite, pink. mom. You love or, a or good really duck. F- or frog's legs on undines on the beach in, um, in okay. south of France. Oh, what are those things? The, 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 pro- the Sardines? soft shell crabs? She loves. No, I love, oh, yeah, I love frog crabs. legs, too. <laughs> yeah. right. and frog. And wow. Frog this is, I'm so, just, by the way, I'm just, just grossed so you out. know, just I'm so just... everybody's clear, my last meal, very different. <laughs> Strawberries, <laughs> plain yogurt, <laughs> and possibly a delicious piece of salmon. <laughs> So I, I have one final question, okay. and, and I'm not sure if they're going to answer this, Uh-oh. but it's a really serious question. Uh-oh. Which daughter do you like I, better? I knew you were going to ask me that. <laughs> Pamela I knew or you were Rachel? Gonna ask me that. I said, oh uh, Roger, I was going to say it the minute before it even came out. My uh, mom, tell them what you told me my entire life growing up. Do you remember? This is what she Rachel? said to me every night before bed. Nope. You are my favorite youngest child. You are my favorite baby daughter. You are my favorite youngest child. Right. And I used to, for that split second, I was like, wait, I'm the favorite? But it was the youngest <laughs> and there was only one. So and I say the same thing to my grandchildren. Uh, of course. Right. I say that Luke is my favorite oldest grandson. And <laughs> I mean, and I tell Skylar the same thing. I mean, they're all my favorites. And Sophie's your favorite granddaughter. Oh, oh, that, that I tell her all the time. Because right. there's only one granddaughter, by the way. Right. Just I never that. had favorites because I always grew and up in a family kids, where they were the favorites. the two boys you have, it's impossible to No favorites. They're no impossible favorites. It's so true. It's no favorites. They're so special in their own ways and it's getting even more so even, you know, not having seen them for 15 months until... Today, because of the pandemic, and to see the way they're developing and how they are just absolutely delicious and brilliant and beautiful and different. And love totally unique. different. Each one's they're unique. So different. Each one's unique and it's special. I tell everybody that that you know you have one kid, you have you're going to have a second kid. You think they're going to be just like the first one? Nothing. And they're nothing. Totally. I don't know, I don't know anybody if you know, among our friends with two two kids or three kids with the same. I think nope. everybody's individual. So and one take a, a one takeaway for our listeners. Fifty five years, parting parting words. Happy wife, happy life, Dad. Uh, <laughs> for sure. Yeah, I mean that I always say, but no, I think it's really more what we said. Keep oh. it keep it interesting. You know, I mean, we're talking about as soon as the pandemic was over, where's our we next trip? We were booking trip? a trip around where's the world. Our next, where's our next trip going to be? We already tried to book Bora Bora and Fiji and <laughs> yeah, that's Australia right. so still, and New Zealand. Right. And, and we still want to go. We, we still want to go to Morocco yeah, that we haven't of, been we have to. A few so things yeah, it's funny. Stuff. Rachel didn't get that bug from you. No. Nope. Yeah. She gets. She has the homebody bug. Yeah. Caius. I think the you baby's know, a homebody. Who you knows? I think baby's like wants to stay in the womb. I don't know. 
I mean, Lukey, our our oldest grandson, is he a, loves to loves to, travel. loves to move. He's still he's done some things. But he's not the baby. He's, 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 he's done some things in his life that I've that I've never. But done. But he's not the baby. Sophie could take it or leave it. Yeah, yeah. So far, but yeah. I'm just Good saying change. she's happier. No, but I'm saying it's just funny. Yeah. It's a funny yeah. thing. Maybe. Yeah. Pamela's a mover and a shaker. I she think was, Skylar will travel the world. I think Skylar yeah. will see everything. Well, I, see everything. I won't be yeah. around to I know think it, that's but true. I'm sure yeah. that, yeah, we just, we, we want to make dinosaurs. the bar mitzvah. Yeah. You guys want, are going to be around be for able a to long walk up on the beam time. Around. Let's do it. You know, that's my, even 100%. if it has a ramp, <laughs> it might have to have a ramp, <laughs> but <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> Doesn't matter how you get there. As long as you get there. Yes. Well, thanks for being with us. We love you. This was such a treat for us. And um, we know you guys have magic fairy dust in your relationship. So we Thank hope you. we got some of that. I think we're okay. Hey, boo. Well, that was interesting. <laughs> the best you part it? about it was like your mom, even to this day, she's like, oh, yeah, I was hot. Ronnie wanted me. I mean, she's like giving it like, even do you know to how this pretty day. my mom was? Not that she's not now, but my mom, first of all, was so beautiful and so chic. Your and mom, like, I mean, your mom, first of all, is very pretty. And she was obviously, yeah, she was gorgeous. But, but it wasn't but, even that. My dad was like clearly and still is. Whipped. But can I tell you why? What I think is so interesting, and it was the first time I ever heard my dad say it. The thing is, like, my dad is such this, like, nice, sweet, easy patience of a saint guy. But as you know, and the people that know him, he's, like, this rocket scientist, brilliant yeah. guy. But what's so interesting... Is and that I he think, fell in love with your mom's mind. That's my that's point. the interesting thing. But that's my I point. I thought he was so shallow and superficial no, a whole time. No, not my time. dad. Nope. Wow. My, my dad, Ronnie has substance. My dad is not the guy that likes the generically beautiful girl that like every guy is falling for. That's not my dad. Me neither. Which I think was really amazing about my parents. And after our discussion with them was the most impressive to me and a big light bulb for me. And what I find so interesting is that I've known my parents obviously my whole life. And yet I still continue to learn new things about them every day. Is that even in a time when their friends were basically graduating high school and getting married and having kids and like becoming these, you know, becoming housewives and and the like, my mom and dad really, I think, found each other because they, my dad fell in love with my mom for her mind, her ambition, her like thirst for life and culture and like living a different life than what was expected. Yeah, your mom was always different. By the way, again, going back to it, and I think maybe we have a little of that streak in it. Like your mom went to Berkeley. Right. You know, which is back then was very. And she couldn't afford it. She worked three jobs. Yeah, she to, worked to for it. And I think the other thing is, you know, your mom was, you know, I knew this already, but, it, you know, your mom was engaged to yep. someone else and your dad pursued her. And, I, you know, I think that maybe may have been also some of the appeals. You know, your dad, it sounded like your dad wasn't that interested in really anybody at the time and then kind of want what you can't have maybe i don't know well i thought that was i mean look at the end of the day i think my parents what's so cool about them is that they've never been the norm or mainstream they've never followed the rules they've never done what everybody else does because that's what you're supposed to do yeah we're a they, little like that they, yeah and they they live differently and i you know when i was younger i didn't think it was cool because i i wanted to be like everybody else when i was younger you know they collected modern art everybody else had traditional art i lived in a modern house everyone else had traditional house all of the things that, you know, I didn't like then, I have such an incredible right. respect for now. Right, you had all this fancy food and you were like, can I just have a hot dog? I wanted like a TV dinner. Right. You're like, you will have no, I actually kebab wanted kebab with Swedish kraut. And you're like, can I get a hot dog? <laughs> it was like veal chops and lamb chops and this thing. And I wanted like a TV dinner. So you know what happened when my parents went out and I had a babysitter? I actually had like a Swanson's TV dinner because I... That's what I wanted. Meatloaf. And sugar cereal. Good. The, no, the thing with, with the, the mashed potatoes and yep. the apple and pie then, like, in the, the corner. And the mystery apple pie thing. Totally. Um, okay. And then I actually thought what was pretty incredible, <laughs> their wedding story was pretty epic because my mother really didn't want a wedding. That's like her worst nightmare. It's her worst nightmare. It is pretty funny because your mom's so into like gowns and like yeah, flowers. Yeah, she and loves stuff. doing like, parties. She likes all the components of it, but she didn't like the wedding. But part. she didn't want the traditional wedding because it wasn't what how she saw it, and that was too norm for her, and she didn't want that. 
and everything about it was a disaster. <laughs> Her veil caught on fire. Okay, that's what I wanted to talk about. How <laughs> funny is it that, don't you remember, you hate all our pictures from our wedding because you kept the veil on the entire night. You know, can we talk about and that? And how funny is it that your mom wasn't able to keep the veil on at all because it burned off. So it's like if you combine it, you guys like had pretty good veil. Actually. My mom and I are so insanely alike. Isn't that funny? How I was like, dude, 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 like both of you had a veil situation on believe, your wedding day. We both believe rules are meant to be broken, and we definitely, um, yeah, um, true. And I remember having that veil on and being like, well, you only wear this once in your life if things go right. And so I was like, why take it off? And as I continued to drink more champagne, I found that I didn't take it off. And then every single picture had a veil when all I really wanted to wear the whole night was the tiara. Oh, You know I love a tiara. Who wouldn't? I love a tiara. I still love tiaras. All right. With that note, let's wrap it up here. And we'd like to make a public service announcement. If you liked what you heard so far. Or if you didn't. Thank you, Rach. I was going to say that. (laughs) Please make sure you're subscribed on Apple Podcasts and give us a rating and review. And please keep on listening. We love it. We love how much you love it. And check us out on our Instagram at at works.for.us. That's at W-O-R-K-S dot F-O-R dot U-S. Also, don't forget, you can call and share your story or ask us a question. That's right. If you want to share your own story or ask us a question, <laughs> please leave us a message at our new Works For Us hotline. Yes, we have a hotline because we're so hot. It's 657 God help me. 549 2251. Again, that's 657 549 2251. We just might share your story or answer your questions on our show. Um, now we're going to go on to another segment of our show. Uh, called Highlight Low Light, where we tell you the highlight of our week and the low light of the week. And I think I'm going to start with you, Rachel. Can you start us off and tell us what your highlight and low life of the week was? Do you want the low first? Yeah, let's build up to it. Let's start depressed and get happy. My low is that you're going to Vegas and my sister who used to visit me twice a month, um, was supposed to come out and have like a girl's weekend while you were gone. Cause obviously she's way more helpful than you. Um, and she's not coming. So that's a huge low. So you're like yesterday's news. Yeah. She has a boyfriend and I've been dropped like a hot potato, but cool. Are there any other metaphors we can use? Um, I no longer exist. <laughs> drop. It's like, a, drop it. Like it's hot. I used to have a sister. Uh, would you like me to go on? <laughs> well, those are a little more direct. They're not metaphorical. Oh, okay, okay. I'm old news. I already said that. Oh, yesterday's news. I'm yesterday's news. I'm... Um, been I'm, there, done that? Yeah, I've been there, done that. I've been there. I am the Rachel been who? there, done that. Rachel, Rachel who? who, sister who, you know, all that. I went from twice no a month... No more sisterhood of the traveling t- pants? Twice a month There'll for... There'll be t- no traveling in Twice a month for two years. She gets a boyfriend. I've seen her... A week well, and a maybe, year and a half. Maybe, cool. you know, maybe, maybe, uh, maybe she can't leave his side for more than 24 hours. Blah, if you know what I'm saying? Blah, blah, do you, want, do you want my high? My high I'd, is really good. I'd love your high. So my high is very exciting because now that I am double vaccinated um, and feeling more free than I have in a year and a half. Hold on, like Rachel. Most, you mean you believe in science? I do. Oh, thank God you but do. But let's not get into that conversation. Um, and I couldn't be more excited that I'm having my very first in-person soiree, although intimate, but hosting, co-hosting an event for the newest summer edition of Curator with my friend and, of course, super influencer, super mom, super woman, Rocky Barnes, who we all know and love. Um, she's been incredible support and friend of the Rachel Zoe brand and now Curator. And we're hosting an amazing dinner this coming Thursday. And you know what's so sad for me? That you don't get to come? Well, there's going to be 15 gorgeous women. 20. 20 gorgeous women hanging out, having drinks, and I would be the only man there. But instead, I'm going to be in Vegas with 10 men and no women. Well, that's your choice. Maybe that's my low. (laughs) But that was my high. So no, no, no. no. Okay. (laughs) I'm just kidding. Um, My low for this week is basically fires. 
I do not understand why someone would start forest fires. That is the most craziest thing of all Psychotic time. behavior. It's so psycho and so sick. And the fact that I do not... I don't think people, you know, we're here on the West Coast and we're pretty close to the fires. I don't think people realize how disruptive this really is and how much energy and time and just thought and just like and really, lives at risk and firefighters. Yeah, just the pandemonium and, I mean, that's caused God. and it's just so selfish. I think we have to be a little less selfish. And obviously someone who's doing that is not in their right mind, but. So if the psycho arsonist is listening to our podcast. Yeah, they already caught him, supposedly. By the way. Citizen, I believe, was very instrumental in that capture. We love the Citizen app, of we course. Do. Um, all right. So my low light was the fire. The highlight of my week. What was my highlight again? That you had mint chip ice cream last night with pretzels in it. No, Rachel. That would be that my highlight of every day. Did everyone and why know? Is that? <laughs> did everyone know that my wife makes me a choice of either peanut butter or mint frozen yogurt with various chopped up treats in it every night. She's a wonderful wife. I just wanted to say that in air. My wife is wonderful. Thanks, honey. I love you. I love little you things. <laughs> All right. Moving right on to my highlight of the week. My highlight of the week, it sounds so silly, but I was suffering some vertigo from uh, a little bit of this vaccination and I was able to go out there and play golf um, my normal way, which is poorly. So I got to at least uh, play around and shoot crappy. So for me, that was a victory and a highlight of my week. You know, for me, for me, just spending any block of time five hours away from my wife and kids is, you know, it's a good time. You know, no one thinks you're cool. <laughs> I wasn't trying to be cool. No, I feel like you are trying to be cool and no one thinks you're cool. No one thinks it's cool to want to leave your wife and kids. I'm just saying to play golf. No one thinks that's cool. I've, and anyone who does think that cool, that's cool, is not cool. I'm pretty sure that the entire PGM America. This is Dr. Laurie Santos from the Happiness Lab. Many people have questions about how to improve levels of happiness. Living a healthy lifestyle is one sure way of increasing happiness. And a good place to start is with your oral health. Just a few small changes to your oral care routine, such as changing your toothpaste to Colgate Total, can lead to beneficial changes in your oral health. Colgate Total helps stop oral health problems like gingivitis and cavities before they start, because preventing oral health problems is a lot easier than treating them. Be dentist ready and get Colgate Total at shop.colgate.com total. Imagine relying on a dozen different software programs to run your business, none of which are connected, and each one more expensive and more complicated than the last. It can be pretty stressful. Now, imagine Odoo. Odoo has all the programs you'll ever need, and they're all connected on one platform. Doesn't Odoo sound amazing? Let Odoo harmonize your business with simple, efficient software that can handle everything for a fraction of the price. Sign up today at Odoo.com. That's O-D-O-O dot com. There are some things that are too good to keep a secret. Like how your Amex Platinum card helps you have the perfect trip. I'd like to check into the Centurion Lounge. Or how it seems like you always get those hard-to-snag tables. Ooh, yum. And how you get the most out of select can't-miss events. With access to the Centurion Lounge, Resi Priority Notified, and Amex card member benefits at select events, you'll have to share. That's the powerful backing of American Express. Terms apply. Learn more at americanexpress.com slash with Amex.